we're going to consider something a number of you have raised, and that is AI and energy, or more specifically, the energy that AI consumes. There are climate experts who are warning that the advance of artificial intelligence could lead to an 80% increase in our global carbon emissions. Well, let's start with sustainability, because that cloud that AI models live on is actually made out of metal, plastic, and powered by vast amounts of energy. And each time you query an AI model, it comes with a cost to the planet. That is Sasha Luchoni, lead climate researcher at the AI company Hugging Face. She's going to be joining us from Montreal in just a moment. How much energy are we using? Well, according to this report from Vox, AI is already consuming as much energy as a small country, and we are only at the beginning. The next web says this is where our two existential crises collide with one another, climate crisis and the exponential growth of AI. Can one help solve the other, or will it exacerbate the problem? Here in the studio, our regular AI contributor, Priya Lakhani, CEO of the AI-powered education company, Century Tech. Welcome. Good to see you. Right, look, when it comes to digital, everybody knows there is a cost. There's mm -hmm. the wiring, there's the chips, there's the precious metals, there's the water that cools the data processing centers. Yeah. What we often don't, don't talk about is the energy that goes into producing AI, and specifically the training of AI language models like ChatGPT. Yeah. Because they're far more hungry than what we've seen before. So you have these AI models that you and I have talked about, we've shown, we've played with, right? These AI models are trained and they're deployed in data centers. And the data centers consume vast amounts of electricity. So if you are powering the data center with non-renewable sources, then essentially you have essentially huge carbon emissions. And those particular models that we're talking about, these generative AI models, not just language models, right? Not just LLMs in terms of chat, models, but also the multimodal models, images, videos, consume an enormous amount. So if you remember in about 2019, mm -hmm. we used to say if you stream an hour of video, right, it was 36 grams of CO2. Just to put that into context for everyone, because that's why we're here, okay, that's driving a car, a typical kind of petrol car, about 160 meters. Now Meta, they just released Llama 3 on Hugging Face, one of my favorite platforms, okay, and that model, they said, uh, emitted about 2,290 metric tons of CO2. And so you're going to say, put that into context. Mm -hmm. That's about 500 average cars and what they emit in an entire year. So you start to get what we had with digital, which is what you asked, all the way to these really huge AI models. And I just want to show you, uh, Christian, what I looked at a little bit earlier before I came in. So I just spent, I just looked at half an hour mm -hmm. of the images produced on Mid Journey. So this is Mid Journey that you're seeing now. Okay, so you've got about 10 unique images that have been produced by this particular platform. And that was about half an hour, about 4.30 p.m. UK time today. Okay, just those images, and that's just on one channel of where you can find Mid Journey. Okay, one, there are, there are lots, hundreds and hundreds, but just those 10 alone would take about two and a half times the battery charge of a phone. So this is a significant problem, and if anyone's interested, there are some great interviews actually with Mark Zuckerberg and others that say that this is there is going to be an energy bottleneck, right? And obviously for activists, this is a significant problem. So I'm really looking forward to having Sasha on yeah. to discuss this with us. Well, let's bring her in. Sasha yeah. Luciani, uh, she is the lead climate researcher at Hugging Face, uh, which uh, Priya really likes. Uh, and she spent <laughs> nearly a decade looking at data storage and machine learning and how this all contributes to our energy consumption. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Right, before we before we get started, maybe I could just frame our conversation with an image that you sent us, actually, that, that for me really underlines just how expensive our digital usage has become. So here is Google's annual energy use, 18.3 trillion watts. That's 10 or 15% of that is going towards AI. <laughs> and here's what the Republic of Ireland uses in any one year, 29.3 trillion watts. So one company, Sasha, is now consuming about two-thirds of what a small country uses each year. And yet I don't hear government talking about that problem. I think it's because uh, AI is really a, a horizontal. It's not like your typical vertical, like agriculture, transportation, and it actually affects all industries, anything that uses AI, anything from navigation to web search. And so I think governments don't really know what bucket to put it in, and when you don't know what bucket it goes in, you tend to kind of let it slip through the cracks. And Sasha, 
can you describe this in terms of the scale of large language models? So what their usage is like and actually tell us what therefore that means in terms of energy consumption and the impact on the environment? Definitely, language models have become one of the most popular usages of AI, and they're being deployed in, in everything. Nowadays, you can talk to, to your stove or your fridge. And uh, in a recent study we did, we found that so training a large language model is definitely very uh, energy intensive, and that's the, the numbers that you gave. But actually, each query also uses energy. And depending on the size of the model, 200 to 500 million queries will equal the amount of energy used for training. So it might seem like a lot, but uh, for ChatGPT, it, it, it uh, averages around 10 million users a day. So within a couple of weeks, you have this vast amount of energy that you know is equivalent to all these cars <laughs> over a year, but just with people using the tool. Did you see this story this week um, that Microsoft, Microsoft are going to uh, plow in about $100 billion into this supercomputer called Stargate? Um, and it's going to be powered by not one, they say, not one, but several nuclear power stations and that, and that got me thinking because I, I have heard Sam Altman at, at ChatGPT talk about this at OpenAI he's talked about this and he he says yep yeah, that, that's how we're gonna have to work we're gonna have to create our own energy systems is that is that perhaps where new energy comes from these the biggest companies in the world driving the investment well I mean it is it is a problem because to what extent do you want big tech companies to be building their own nuclear reactors and um, maybe that energy could be better used uh, for other things, right? Because we should be decarbonizing our energy globally. And currently, if we're going to funnel all that investment into the energy used for AI, maybe other sectors will get overlooked. And we should be focusing on those if we really want to decarbonize. And Sasha, what I'm quite excited about is that when we talk about AI models, and I was on Hugging Face today, so for those who don't know what it is, it's an AI model repository, uh, and playing with uh, Llama 3, I like the fact that models now have a description, potentially, of you know how much energy they have used. You've produced something pretty novel at Hugging Face, haven't you? So um, when, you're, when you're building these AI models, we're focused on the latency, the speed of the model, and how performant the model is. But you're potentially creating a, like, a little trip advisor of how efficient it is. So tell us about that. Yeah, currently when people go on Hugging Face, they tend to shop around a little bit for models that work for their for the task that they want to do. It could be language, it could be it could be audio, it could be image generation. Now we're even looking at video, and typically they'll look at things like performance or latency. But I'm calculating the energy usage across all different tasks and models on on the hub on the Hugging Hugging Face website, and I want to provide that information to people so that they can factor it in. So maybe this model. Uh, is not only faster, but it's more efficient. Maybe this model is slightly less performant, but it's vastly more efficient. So I'm, 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 develop energy, I'm developing energy star ratings for AI models. Well, listen, since we're talking about how we mitigate the problem, let me introduce you to Chris Starkey, because he is the CEO of the London-based startup NextGen Cloud, and they've been in business since 2020, and they source data centers that are entirely powered by renewable energy. Welcome, Chris, to the program. Tell us what Hi. you do and how your clients would typically work. Well, I mean, so, I mean, uh, we're on the other side of the fence. We're, we're our, our business is all about building, you know, large scale um, uh, GPU clusters. Basically, uh, we've got a core focus on building high density accelerate, accelerated compute. Basically, this is uh, typically what companies um, maybe that use Hugging Face or companies that are using uh, or building their their own foundational models. This is the type of infrastructure that they would be uh, consuming. Um, and our mission effectively is to deliver this at scale, 100% renewably powered. And Chris, how do we achieve this sort of optimization of models? Because there's all sorts of things that we could be looking at. So we're looking at infrastructure efficiency uh, that I know you look at in terms of cooling technologies. I'd love to hear more about that. And then also the optimized um, hardware. And what, so, so for example, the NVIDIA brought out the Blackwell platform. And what they say with Blackwell is that it reduced the cost and energy consumption by about 25x for tech companies. So can you describe these sorts of methodologies, you know, how reliant we are on these? And when we talk about cooling methodologies, can you explain that to yeah, us? What is that? You know, we know that data centers and we know that these <laughs> racks need cooling, but it would be really great if you can walk how, how, the audience through the process. How long have we got? Um, I'm not too sure how, how long we've got, but- uh, <laughs> Not uh, long. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so a, 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 a short high level, I mean, you know, only a few years ago, you know, we were building um, uh, high performance environments that, you know, maybe 10 to, to 20 kilowatts uh, was, was, was deemed as kind of high dense. 
Um, and, uh, you know, now quite commonly we're building out, um, you know, environments that are 50 to 60 kilowatts per rack. Um, and uh, the new iteration, the next generation of chips um, and some of the infrastructure, you know, that, that we're bringing into play for next year, 2025, you know, we're going to be north of 120 kilowatts per rack. So, you know, we're seeing a, a clear, you know, uh, increase in exponential growth in density. Um, and, you know, that, that's great. We can fit more power into data centers, but, you know, the, the, the data centers will eventually be drawing a huge amount of resource, a huge amount of energy. So it's, it's just unsustainable to, to have traditional techniques of calling, like air calling, which is quite common now. Um, so, you know, we've got a keen focus on, on, you know, trialing and testing new ways to call the chips. Um, one of the new ways um, is something called, you know, liquid core director chip. Um, this brings a huge amount of efficiency, but at the same time, you know, as chips get more powerful, you know, we're, we're obviously drawing a huge amount more power, you know, per square feet, or if you like, or per square foot in each data center. So, you know, I, yeah. sorry, go on. No, I'm just going to say, because we're really pressed for time, but I just want to get a really quick final answer from both of you. Maybe you can chip in on this. Um, pardon the pun. Um, <laughs> What about sovereignty? Because everybody wants control of their own computers, and, and obviously some of that's going to come down to where the cloud is, what energy they have, what energy they can generate. Uh, if we're going to make this available to everybody, how concerned are you both by that? Sasha, let me start with you first. I feel that AI is really uh, slipping through the cracks when it comes to accounting for energy and carbon because it's often companies in one country using cloud compute in another country and often, the, the for example, every time I talk to cloud providers, they're like, we don't know what's running on our centers. We, it could be streaming, it could be AI, so it's really hard for them to count uh, to, to account for this energy usage. So every time I'm like, okay, give me a number, they're like, we don't have any numbers. So I see that uh, it's currently not being accounted for, let's say. Yeah, Chris? Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, if they if they're trying to do it sustainably, I think a lot of you know countries will will struggle. You know, they 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 absolutely will. There's just not enough infrastructure, you know, locally to 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 provide sustainable infrastructure. Not at the scale of demand that we're seeing currently. Every country is going to want a sovereign cloud. They're all absolutely going for it right now. Everyone wants their own sovereign GBT, for example. Um, they're not going to be able to do it currently. Certainly not here in the UK, I do not think. No, I'm um, pretty much just saying everybody wants a supercomputer. Everyone wants a supercomputer. Well, I, I also as well, I mean, I, you know, I'm just thinking back to G20, you know, when, when you, know, you know, to, to, to the, the climate conferences yeah. and, and, and uh, you know, when people talk about carbon footprints and, and what belongs to that carbon footprint, we talk about emissions, but we never talk about cloud power or, or generating you know computer and it's the, generating it's the length of time it will take for supply to, to create these renewable energy you know data centers at 100 yeah. percent to the demand yeah. think about how quick it was that chat gpt exploded right? it's amazing sasha luchoni chris starkey amazing stuff thank you for being with us uh, here you. on ai decoder come back soon after the break priya will guide us